Good morning. Uh, welcome to the end of the week. And I uh, want to just take a moment and say thank you again for all your kindnesses. Um, tomorrow, my son is going to be getting married, my youngest. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, that makes four for four. All four of my kids married the opposite gender. That's a blessing, isn't it? And uh, that shouldn't offend anybody. We're in a messed up world. And uh, we ought to cling to the word of God and truth and righteousness. And, but anyway, my son's marrying a young lady. She's visited here often to our church. And, and um, their plan is to go to uh, Tr Trinidad, uh, to the mission field. But of course, there's um, obviously some awkward days right now. So uh, they both got jobs here locally. They plan on serving in our church. And... Um, uh, got good jobs where they pay their own bills, got their apartments, things set up. So we're, we're blessed. And, um, I appreciate your kindness helping rear my children. I'm, I'm the one responsible, uh, before God for my children that God gave me, but he has used many of you to love my kids, teach my kids and, um, support them, buy their candy, support them for the car wash and, and, uh, teach them, coach them, uh, work with them and go to camp with them, whatever else. And, and I'm just very, very thankful for your investment in, in my children's lives. 40 years here, almost 39 years in a few months. Um, and um, I'm so thankful for you that have loved and cared and invested. And it sure means a lot to me. And you get to a wedding like this and, and I can't help but think uh, who's responsible. And, and there are a lot of people that have invested in these young people, college teachers and and uh, we've got pastor friends around the country that have invested in my kids and and uh, love my kids from afar and, and I'm just so thankful I was thinking about our country and uh, of course the burden of my heart you were uh, we'll talk about it in a minute but um, I want us praying for God to bless America and I want us praying that God would have mercy on our nation and help us and and deliver us from evil that uh, Luke chapter 11, model prayer, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Oh, God, help us. We're in trouble. We need God. And so um, thinking about our foundation, Daniel Webster, of course, was key in the foundation of our country. And Daniel Webster said this, Hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. And that, that's in the pledge, right? Uh, those words aren't just accidental words. They came from key men. Hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. Miracles do not cluster. And what has happened once in 6,000 years may not happen again. Hold, to the, hold on to the Constitution, for if the American Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout the world. Those are the words, as prophetic a words, as anybody I know, and Webster was a brilliant man, and those founders knew never in the history of the world had there been anything like our Constitution. Never in the history of the world had there been anything like the Bill of Rights, and it just hadn't happened, and, um, and we need to hang on to it. And right now, uh, our Constitution, Bill of Rights, all that we hold dear, the things that hold our nation together, they are under attack as never before. And with that in mind, I want to mention that you should have gotten one of these um, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, this little booklet, a little guide. Uh, mine's different than yours, the different a little bit. The, mine's got a paper cover on it, but um, uh, this is the prototype. But um, uh, I love this picture that's there. And if you look over, uh, that's that statue there in my bookshelf. It reminds me, uh, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart, Jeremiah 29, 13. And um, there's weekly assignments, basically, things that I want you to do. And there's bookmarks. And so you should not have one of the bookmarks here with me, but you should have gotten a bookmark. And um, during this week, I want you to take that bookmark and hopefully each day you've taken time uh, each day this week to pray, to pray for your president, pray for the Supreme Court, pray for those legislators making decisions. Um, we've got congressional decisions and we've got, it's a, it's a complex world we're in. Oh, 330 million people or so in this nation and, 
And, and honestly, what Webster said, the world is at stake. Freedom is at stake. You think if, if America falls to a communist, socialist type mentality, where will the free, where will other countries go for someone to help them? Who is going to come to the rescue? Uh, there's no one left but America. Um, and this, that's why the devil wants this country so very badly. Um, he says in Matthew 22, 21, 22, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive, pray. First Timothy 2, 1 and 2, I exhort you, first of all, prayer, supplication, intercession, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I hope you're taking time each day to pray and to ask God for help for our country. Pray for our leaders. Pray for strength. You know there's there's got to be people being threatened. There's people who are fearful for their lives, for their retirements or whatever. You know, most of us don't have a retirement. But these politicians, we have no idea the burdens they carry and the, the threats that are on them. And, and I hope you'll pray for our country. And I hope you'll take time to fast. We have a fasting calendar up at church. And, and um, if you've not signed up, I'd like you to sign up. Uh, my goal is that for 70 days from last Friday, January 1st, all the way through the, the 13th of March, there'll be multiple people fasting every single day and fasting for our country. And if you can't health-wise, whatever, you can't fast the whole day, then take a meal. Take two meals. Say, I, won't, I won't eat from, you know, when I go to bed until noon the next day or whatever. And you, you know what you have to do. My, my, uh, I've got dear friends that are diabetic and, and that you got to figure that out. But to decide you're going to set some time apart, most of us could, most of us need to fast. We're, we're overweight. Um, most of us wouldn't hurt us to lose 20 or 30 pounds, but, uh, I hope you'll take time to pray and take time to fast, and take time to ask God's blessing on our country. Oh, how our nation needs God, and how desperately we need the Lord. And the world needs the gospel. But you see, if America uh, hasn't got um, the mercy and blessing of God on us, then we're not going to be able to help other countries. And um, we've got to take care of, of America and keep us safe and keep us free. And so I just want to encourage you to pray. A very familiar verse, most of you would quote it by heart, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And of course, the first person immediate application is talking about Israel and is talking about the Jewish people, not just the Jewish as a pe Jews used as a people, but the Jewish nation and their dirt, the, the actual land of Israel. That dirt is God's. That's holy ground. And um, God's going to give, God's going to set up his kingdom right there in Israel. That dirt is, there's nothing sacred about America's dirt, but there is about Israel. And uh, God has made that place a precious place. But the principle that if a people will, will pray, and seek God's face, and turn from our wicked ways, and um, then God will hear. And, and I'm just taking a moment here, let me just talk about us, getting us right with God. And I want to encourage you, and you'll, and, and if you follow along with us in this workbook we have, we're talking about prayer, and then we're going to talk about getting right with God, drawing near to God. Uh, don't hurry time with God. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but there ought to be some time during the week when you're not in a hurry, when you just stop and bow your head and wait on God and just, just say, God, talk to me. God, show me my pride. Show me my sinfulness. Reveal to me my lusts, my covetousness. Show me my selfishness. Uh, show me my pettiness. Show me my doubts and you know, Romans 14, I think it's verse 23, says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And nothing wrong with saying, God, show me my faithlessness and bring me to that point of, of humble prayer and humble trust. And, and that's not comfortable. It hurts. But uh, I want to encourage you, if my people, so those that we're in our vernacular, we're saying that's the believers, um, will humble themselves 
But we don't deserve anything from God. See, it's mercy. And, and to say we don't deserve mercy is redundant because mercy is something you don't deserve. And uh, so I just ask for mercy. What am I saying? I want what I don't deserve. Uh, our country is so shamed, God. And Christians, oh, Christians by the millions have forsaken God's house and forsaken the, the gathering together of the believers. And millions of Christians, I don't doubt that they're saved, but they've got their kids in, in active, not right now with all of our COVID craziness the last seven months, but, but over the last 30 years, we've put our children in sports, we've put them in music lessons, we've put them in every kind of activity imaginable, and church has gone by the wayside. For some, it's been weekend camping, weekend beach trips. It's, it's, uh, it's athletics has really won a lot of the hearts. Of, and I'm pro of sports. I like athletics, but not on Sunday. We're not, we're not skipping church to throw a ball. No way in the world. And uh, this, this thing of humbling ourselves and, re and just being willing to go to God and confess our sin um, if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. You see, in order to turn from our wicked ways, we need to get a glimpse of God. We need to, Because if all we're doing is running through life, looking at mankind and looking at ourselves, we might look pretty good. But when you stop long enough to humble yourselves and, and stop everything and, and talk to God, read some scripture out loud to God and then bow your head and then when you find your mind wandering, read the scripture again. Look over to 1 John chapter 1 with me, almost to the end of your Bible. 1 John chapter 1. And we consider this thing of, of uh, drawing near to God. 1 John is all about the fellowship with God that we can have. What a privilege. John says, that which we have seen and heard, which our hands have handled, of the word of life. We've touched the living word of God, John says it. John says there's nothing like it, the most miraculous and wonderful thing, that we knew Jesus first person, and, and we've touched him, and we've eaten with him, and we've walked with him, and we've, we've uh, fellowship, we've served with him, we've been on the lake together with him in the boat, and, and, and in, with Peter's case, we've walked on the water together. And John says, boy, we want you to have that same fellowship that we have, and, and um and that's what, he, what he's, he's talking about there. In, in 1 John, he goes on in uh, chapter 1, in verse 4, These things write we unto you that your joy might be full. This fellowship is what brings joy. Verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowships with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we want you to have it. Verse 6, or verse 5, This is the message which we've heard. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So you're going to have to turn from your shamefulness and turn from your sinfulness. And if you're going to walk in the light, you got to turn from the darkness. And you can't walk with God and be arm in arm with the world. You can't do it. James 4.4 4 says friendship with the world is enmity with God. So he goes on and he says in, in uh, verse 6, If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Down at verse 8, he says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Of course, we're sinners. So how do we keep in fellowship? Of course, I'm a sinner. And yes, God is holy. If I walk in the darkness, I'm not walking in the light, but I'm a sinner. How do I do this? Then we get verse 8, if we, uh, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Plural, specific sins, not sin corporate, but sins individual. I got mad at my wife. I spoke harshly to that waitress. I was bitter toward my boss. Name the sin. Verse um, 9, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will do two things there in verse 9. What, number one, he will forgive us. That's wonderful that I can find forgiveness. But number two, he'll cleanse us. And so how can we walk in the light? Well, when I sin and I catch myself and, and the Spirit of God reminds me, and I might not stop right away. It'd be good if I did, but I may not. It might be later on in the day. The Holy Spirit's working on me, and I realize, man, I messed up. I'm wrong. I'm so wrong. And I need to turn to God and confess that sin, not to a priest, not to a pastor, to God. And, and verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just, number one, to forgive us. 
and number two, to cleanse us so I can walk back over in the light because I'm not only forgiven, I'm cleansed. Uh, that, you know, my name's Bruce and I'm an alcoholic and I haven't drank in 20 years. You haven't drank in 20 years, you're not an alcoholic. If you get saved, you're a child of God, you're a new creature in Christ. I'm not in bondage to this old flesh. And so we need to be careful that, that we don't glory in that weakness. Uh, when you've done wrong, you've done wrong. Call it wrong. Admit it's wrong. Tell yourself it's wrong. Tell God it's wrong. Turn to God. Confess that it's wrong. God will forgive you and cleanse you. And, and then you walk with God. And, there's, and you'll dip your sails somewhere along the way and mess some, up something. Someone's going to push your button and you're going to say or do what you shouldn't. And then you need to be, you know, you need to understand it was wrong. Be remorseful. Come back to God. You might say, well, how can I just keep coming back to God? Remember the story where the disciples said, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? They thought that's pushing it. And Jesus said, how about 70 times seven? And he told some parables, some stories of forgiveness. And that story there, 70 times seven, well, it's an encouragement to me because sometimes we've got that besetting sin that Hebrews chapter 12 talks about that so easily besets us. And we it seems like that one thing we keep stumbling on. And you know what you do? You turn to God and you confess it and you're sorry for it and you hate it. And you ask him for help. And if you're not sorry, ask, confess it and ask him for help to help you have the right attitude toward it. And uh, he's so good. He's so good to us. You know, he, Romans 8, 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? He already gave his son to die for us. Don't you think God will help you think right? Don't you think God will help you get a distaste for wrong? And, and it could be wrong, it's pride. It could be wrong that you look down on people who are struggling with in something you're not. You know, you're skinny and you make fun of us who have extra pounds or, uh, you know, you're, you got a lot of hair and you and you think your hair's your glory or something. You know what? I don't know what you you're very smart. You sing well. Maybe you make money, your business very successful, and you can look down on those. Look, those are sins just like the other sins are. And uh, but you come to him and you confess it, and he forgives you and he cleanses you, and then you walk in fellowship. And the goal is to see how clean you can be and and you're going to slip and you get right back up. And, but make, see, your goal is not to not drink liquor anymore or not to be proud anymore or not to be bitter with your words. That's not your goal. Your goal is to walk with God. Your goal is to be intimate with him. And the sin that breaks fellowship, that's what ought to bother you. I hate this thing because it takes me away from fellowship with God. I hate this attitude I've got because it separates my fellowship and I want to be walking with God all the time. And I, I, I have pity parties and I sit around, woe is me. Well, you know what? Your pity party separates you from God. That's why people in pity parties often commit suicide because you, you start wallowing in that self-pity and you don't fellowship with God and you think God doesn't care. Well, the problem is you don't care. If you'll confess your pity party as self-centeredness, confess your pity party as as, a, as arrogance that you deserve better or the foolishness of glorying in your own want and you'll go to God and say, that's such a bad spirit. Help me live for others. Help me serve others. Find a place at church to serve and, and jump in with both feet and live for God and make a difference for God. Um, all those joy in serving Jesus. And so he says, I want you to, to cleanse yourself. The, heal Jesus, the Lord will cleanse you, wash it all away, and oh, what a great God we have. Uh, I hope that you'll walk with him. I hope you'll take time to pray for your country, pray for your state, pray for our churches. Oh, our churches need Jesus' help. We need, we need God to work on the hearts of church members. Uh, the statement, I think, is in our revival book. Uh, our churches are filled with dead preachers preaching dead sermons to dead people in the pew. And not physically dead, just no passion, no life, no spiritual anointing. We want the Holy Spirit of God to work in us. Oh, I hope you'll pray and I hope you'll take time to seek after God and, and, uh, and stay pure and stay clean and stay seeking God. And, and oh, I look forward to, to uh, God's blessing on our lives in 2021.